This is like almost impossible to fold by yourself. Yeah, can I just get another one? <laughs> this is not folded right. And sorry. <clears throat> my other stitches in the little box. I might need more stitches. They're in the red box. I don't think you'll be able to see them. Yeah, no, I need a bicro and a monocro, please. get my instrumentos. Here's a gift. Thank you. Mm. Can't say you never gave me. I know, right? I see the indicator and it is good. Good. So we have a few more instruments now. I didn't forget that you guys were there. <laughs> um, so when you bring your instruments to your field, um, just organize your tray. Just organize it a bit. So this will be a good habit for when we get ready to start counting instruments, right? So we'll just kind of tidy this up a little smidge. A little smidge. I'm gonna need those, so I'll take those out. I usually do teeth on one side and no teeth on the other side, just for my own purposes. Okay, so now I think I'm organized and I'm ready to count. Are you good to count? I'm ready. Okay. Oh, I almost just forgot that this happened. Oh, there we go. Okay, left. One. Two, three, four, five. Yes. Retex. I got one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten retex. Oh, so that should be all my sponges. But we have I got one. One body. And needles. I have one there. 
Did you see it? Off in the middle. Okay. Two. Two. And then when you have packages like this, you just want to visualize the needle. It's kind of like OCD kicking in. But um, so that's number three. Three. Okay. Three there. Blades. One, two, and then take a peek in here. Three, four, and then hypos, one, two. Two hypos. Okay. I think that's everything, huh? Medicine. Ooh, medicine. Okay, so for this trick, we're going to be drawing up our medication, okay? So we want to label our syringe first, and we want to put the 18-gauge needle on. Um, it's the biggest uh, needle, okay? So it's just a lure lock, so that means it twists on. It does, there's a slip tip too where it just pushes on, but this has like little locking mechanisms. So you just put them together and then twist in opposite directions, just snug. If you put it on there too tight, you're not gonna be able to get it off. So that's what you wanna draw up with, not what you wanna poke your patient with. We're gonna use a smaller one for to inject. So we'll switch them out, okay? So we load that up and then we'll make our label. Let me make sure I get the right side. Okay. All right, so I have lidocaine, 2% with epi, 1 to 100,000, 20 milliliters, and expires 821. Okay, I see xylocaine, 2% with epi, 1 to 100,000, let's say, 20 mLs, 821. Okay. And we keep laughing because this actually says 1 to 1 million, and you'll never see 1 to 1 million. It's just going to type on it. So then the once the circular pops the top off, they'll take an alcohol swab and they'll swab the top for 10 seconds before that you drop any of your meds. 821. Okay. Got that. And then just a little, you know, cheat code. Put your label where it's not covering up your numbers. What happened, Mars? <laughs> okay, it sticks better when you take the back off. Okay, just on there. And then that way you can still see your numbers because you'll have to read off from them later, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I remove a cap from the hypodermic needle, I typically just lock one arm in and then go with the other arm because if you do kind of both at the same time, it, there's like that recoil thing. So I just feel safer doing it this way. And then you wanna just um, draw about an ML up in your syringe and then be looking at your numbers, right? You wanna fill it to capacity. And so usually like you wanna communicate with your circulating nurse, like, are you gonna stay still? Some of them like you to stay still and they'll and, you know, put the vial on or whatever the case may be. You just don't wanna poke each other. You want to try to go for the center and you want to keep your fingers back and you're just going to fill. You want to keep pulling back on the plunger, otherwise it will um, yeah, I only have eight in here. <clears throat> I think we need to refill that bottle. Um, Single-handed scoop, you never want a two-hand on the hypo. So maybe that's another station we could add just like a couple syringes and hypos so they can practice with that. Um, and then push it on. I would refrain from doing this. What not to do, what to do. Okay, just because if the integrity of the cap isn't good, I mean, you don't wanna hurt yourself. Don't, don't even like open up that door. Some people will scoop it and push it on like this. Again, it's probably okay, but if the integrity of the cap isn't good, it could poke through or whatever. Anyways, this is the practice I use, but it's not the only practice. And now I'm gonna switch my hypo. Okay, usually I wouldn't go through all that shenanigans. My circulator is waiting so patiently. <laughs> okay, what else we got? All right, so for irrigation, we have sterile water, expires 1025, and it is 1,000 milliliters. 1,000 mLs of sterile water, 1025. Why do you think we're using sterile water? This is my question yesterday. What do we typically use to irrigate the wound with? Saline. And so why would we choose to not do that? 
Because of the implant? No. No. Nope. The breast biopsy, right? So. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um. Think about what we're removing. What are we potentially removing? Tissue, so you don't want to compromise the tissue. Tissue that could potentially be what? Kidding. We're doing a breast biopsy. What are we checking for? Tumors, cancer. And what could the tumor be? Cancer, right? So why would we choose to use sterile water if we think there's cancer? What do we know about isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic solutions and how cells react to those? That's your homework. Okay. So, um, let's see, we have everything, right? I mean, we're good? Okay, um, so I'm gonna load my scalpel, and to do that, you need a scalpel handle and a needle holder. Um, best to use one that's a little bit more hefty than the Webster, just so you don't hurt him, right? But, um, so, um, typically for a case like this, surgeon's gonna use a 15 blade. Um, so, do I have two 15 blades? Yeah, so I'm gonna load up, what what size do you want, 15 blades? Mm -hmm. Okay, is that okay, okay. Um, so when you load the blade, you wanna have the needle holder in your right hand and the handle in your left. This is the only way that it really works. Switching hands doesn't really work. So you wanna grasp the um, blade on the non-cutting edge, right? So my cutting edge is over here. Okay, so I'm on the back of the cutting edge and I'm above this little keyhole. Okay, we call that a keyhole. So this knife handle has the matching little key, if you will, and it has a little slot, a little groove on both sides. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's on both sides. And then another thing is this angle, right? That blade is angled in the same exact way, right? So that's how you know that you have it oriented correctly if it's like this first of all you can't see the key and you know it's yeah so this is the way that it needs to be and then you're just going to start it on um through the keyhole and you'll just slide it till it locks on okay and then now it's ready to go um a couple different things you can do you can put it if if the facility uses like a a hands-free or you know sharps passing policy you can put it in your kidney basin you can keep it on the back table until it's time but if they're going to use a knife right off the bat and the local right off the bat i typically just put it up on the nail stand i like to keep my sharps closest to me and now i'm going to decide what instruments i would like for a breast biopsy it's pretty simple probably Maybe a couple mosquitoes. You want to bring clamps up two at a time, right? A couple hemostats. I'll put up there, curved hemostats. Um, Alice's are good for grasping the mass. Sometimes you'll see Leahy's. We're going to put a couple Alice's up there. Um, we really don't need sponge sticks for this. A fine scissor. So I'm going to put the mats up there. Um, she's going to be stitching, so I need the suture scissor. And then a couple needle holders. Um... So again, there's several ways, like you can keep your sutures loaded back here. I was just raised in small community hospitals and surgery centers where it was usually me and the surgeon, so I have a tendency to like put more up on my mayo stand. So what I do with my sutures is I just put them on the opposite side. I put a towel up here and I'm gonna load them here in a second, I'll show you. But for now, I'm just gonna pair these things together I'm just gonna move this for a second because he keeps getting in my way. Get my army navies while I'm over here. Okay, so I'll lay out the rest of my fun stuff. If we have a lot of instruments on the mayo stand, we wanna use a roll towel, but for this, there's not too many. So I'm just gonna put them like that, like how you guys set up your mayo stand before. So, um, I have my local and my blade closest to me. I have a scissor, a um, couple uh, different types of hemostats, depending on what she might like. The Alice to grasp the mass and so a couple different 
types of retractors, SINs and Army Navies, and then I just need some forceps. So I'm maybe going to pull up a DeBakey and an Adson with teeth. I don't know, sometimes if it's a bigger breast, they might want a DeBakey. I like to keep them by my scissors. Because usually when you pass the scissors, you're going to pass the forceps. So keep them there. I'm going to bring up my cup for to put my biopsy in, so I'm ready for that. <sighs> Did I miss anything? Okay, oh, I'm gonna load my suture. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that really quickly. So the first suture that the surgeon's gonna want is the Vicryl suture, or no, silk. And um, silk is a black multi-filament thread, and um, it's non-absorbable, okay? And uh, that's what she's gonna use to mark the specimen with, the margins of the specimen. This is a 3.0 silk and it's on an SH needle. Uh, SH is just a tapered, very common, like peanut butter and jelly, bread and butter, whatever you wanna say. So it's set in the package. I'm not gonna like belabor this too much, but it's set in the package for right-handed surgeons. So when you load it, you wanna load it about a third of the way away from the sledge and at the tip of the needle holder, all right? And for a right-handed surgeon, you know you've loaded it right because the needle should be between the two hands pointing towards the midline, like if I was the surgeon, right? So you'll see how we pass it and then we'll practice a lot. All right, so I'm ready with that first stitch. And then I usually get the first closing stitch ready so that there are two that are available. <clears throat> and I just stick them into this towel. And then my last one, I usually put under here so that I have it with me. But again, if you feel more comfortable keeping, keeping them back here or depending on what your hospital policy is, okay? We can figure that, we can change that up. I got my bovie. Got my stuff that I'm gonna put up right at the beginning of my case. Fill the aseptic. See these two little flanges right here? They say, put these two fingers there. That's what they say. If there was braille, that's what they would say. The back of it has this little divot. Put your thumb there. This is the fastest way to fill it up. Push all the way up as hard as you can. Keep holding, put it in. Wait till it fills up. Turn it up to the sky. Do that again. And then one more time if you need to. You don't want to pass it to your surgeon half full, right? And then this also helps you to know how much, like this is 120 mLs, 60 from here to here, and then 60 in the bulb. And then I place it in here like this because I know when it's time for me to give it to my surgeon, it's easy for me to grab it and put it in their hand like this. That's how they're going to want to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I think just my drape towels, I should be ready. for this type of case, um, this is a four prep stick and it's got an orange tint to it. Um, so if they have beta gun allergy, this is still okay to use for them. Um, I'll kind of show you how, I'm not actually gonna crack the stick, um, but I will show you how they would hold it and how they would do the prep. So it comes in a, con like kind of how the scrub brush comes. It's gonna be in a packaging that is just the size of that brush. So when you open it, sometimes you can have someone open it to you. If they're gonna have it off the field, they'll just tuck the top under and then they'll open glove. That's you. Yeah. This glove is, we're gonna pretend this glove doesn't have a hole in it. So you'd have sterile gloves on and then you would grab the core prep stick and when you push this part in it cracks it and everything mixes and then it's going to start filling up an orange color there so you want to always start at the incision site and then you work your way around it so you never go back over the incision site or the site you started with after you're in the dirtier 
area. And then we'll go from chin to about chest, like mid, like rib level, and then right down to armpit sides, like right here. So that would be the area that would be prepped out if it was, I mean, the, for our uniboob, that's kind of <laughs> how it is. If you were just doing one breast, it'd be like midline to armpit, so belly, almost to the belly button, and then to chin. So that would be the prep. And then we let it dry. Three minutes. And if you have really good surgeons, they will allow that three minute dry. Banner <laughs> now has a kitchen timer on the wall that has three minutes and they hit it because they had a fire there. Oh. Because of prep. Oh wow. Yeah. Because they didn't wait for the dry time and then, and a lot of times it'll pool in the belly button. Like here, we're not prepping the abdomen, but that's where it has a tendency to collect, right? It's the little pool mm -hmm. in yeah. the abdomen. Um, and so they went to use the cautery and nobody had like dried up in the belly button. And I would say, most of the doctors are really good about it, and a lot of times they'll come in and they'll ask you, even if there is time, they'll say how much time we have left. Yeah. So make sure that you kind of like look at the clock on the wall, or if there's a digital clock, um, like Ms. Windsor was saying, sometimes they hey, don't. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Rhiannon. Hi, Rhiannon. I'm going to be your scrubber. I'm Dr. G. Hi, Dr. G. You ready for today? I am. I'm good for this. <laughs> I want her in here every day. Can someone make that happen? Can you put that on a purpose card? Yes. <laughs> and, 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 as my that does not make friends. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want your sleeves? Yes. yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, they don't normally pop. Sound like spaghetti. Thank you. Noises. I hear the sound. Like, uh, could we duplicate the smell a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we could cook up some hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple things we have to do before we get ready. I put a couple sponges on the field, and then we're going to put our light handle on. And sometimes we'll just pass it off to the surgeon, but for training purposes, we'll have you guys do it as the surge check. But you definitely can too. The surgeon will usually help you. But we're not going to, we're just gonna kind of stand there and be lame so that you get your practice, right? So the light handle, this kind just screws into there. This little thing is to protect your hand because you know it's not sterile up there. And I always think of putting on the light handle as like a two part job. One, you put it on and two, you focus it to your sight because we're reaching up out of our zone, right? So we don't wanna do that any more than we have to. So we're gonna put it on and then adjust it to our field our surgeon's head and then we have a couple cords that we need to pass on and the 
the way I typically teach this, is that Mr. O'Hare? It is. Um, is get your orientation, know where your equipment is. It could be up above the head, it could be over there, it could be over here, wherever. Just don't expect it to always be in the same place. And then control what you're gonna keep on the field, right? You can always dish out more, but you can't pull back onto the field once it goes off. You wanna make sure that you're far enough over your field that your circulator doesn't reach over onto your field. And you wanna leave 12 to 18 inches worth of distance. Okay, and then I just go under my nail stand from here. And then you gotta attach it to the field, okay? There's a couple ways. There's this little Velcro dealy bob, which is amazing. Okay, if it doesn't have the Velcro dealy bob, you can use one of these fantastic disposable clamps. And what you would do is uh, make a little sling with the sheet, all right? And then you would just clamp it. You wanna make sure that you don't clamp the cord, okay? So you can attach it that way. What if you don't have this purple dealy bob? Then you can use an Alice, okay? If you don't have a drape clamp, all right? But we're just gonna use the Velcro because the Velcro is so amazing. And when you're new and you're working with cords, like this seems like pretty simple and straightforward, but they do have a tendency to get away from you. So put one and attach it, put another and attach it. You know, once you get skilled in it, you can throw off 10 cords and you can manage them while you're managing it here. But at first it's kind of squirrely, all right? So the bobe is the next one and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep in my hand closest to my field, everything that I want to Keep on the field. I'm going to give my 12 to 18 inches worth of distance to my circulator. And if she needs more, I can dish off a little bit more. But again, we'd rather have too much than not enough. And then there's the holster. Bovi always lives in here when it's not in use, right? So it doesn't accidentally get activated or burn a hole or burn the patient or whatever the case may be. There's a couple places you can put it. One is um, on either side of the mail stand, but we'll put it here. But just so you can see it, lift it up and stick it like that, and then the bobe can go in there, okay? You can also use this little hole to put it through the Velcro. I'll show you with this one up here. Now, depending on if your surgeon is left-handed or right-handed, they might want it up by their left. So the surgeon might tell you where they want it. Or you just put it wherever and they're fine with it, right? It doesn't matter. Do you have a preference? I like it. Okay. I like for you to hand me everything. <laughs> okay. I don't want to reach it. I'm one of those. Um, okay, so cords are ready. Um, all we have to do is our timeout. So our patient is Viv Akins, and the day of birth is 8-21-64. We're doing a right breast biopsy and no known drug allergies. Awesome. The right side is the correct side. It's the middle. The middle side is the correct side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I Local? agree. Do you guys agree? Agreed. Okay, so when we pass the local, we want to tell them what it is, what the strength is, what the expiration date is, all that fun stuff. And you want to pass it like the scalpel, all right? You got to be closer to the business end. Okay, they're going to receive it like this. But, you know, if you give it to them like this, they're going to be like, <laughs> right? So you got to remove the cap, same way. Hold it how you're going to pass it. Just turn your hand upside down, keep your elbow in, pull your cap away and then you're ready to pass. This is 2% lidocaine with epi, expires 821. There's only eight mLs in there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's localize. Let's localize. Baby little needle. Do you want the marking pen? I do. Okay. I told you I just want you to hand me stuff. <laughs> I don't want to even think. Nice. Pickups. Four steps. Stay nada. Yeah. Cut time. <laughs> Barbie. Oh, you're testing it out. <laughs> I like it. 
look, it cuts. Just kidding. Sometimes <laughs> they'll suction the smoke, but you don't want to just be so annoying with this that you're in your surgeon's way, like, right? right? <laughs> they'll stab you with the bobby. <laughs> Mets. Mm -hmm. I always give them the bobies with the suction on, they get so mad at me, but then they wouldn't have me open a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold, please. Do -do. Do -do. Do -do. There's no music, huh? No, could you sing? Yeah, and I heard you sing. You heard me sing? Yeah, I heard that you can sing. I did. Yeah. I told you that. Oh, a little birdie. No, 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 mm -mm. no canto, no cantando, <laughs> no canto, no canto, no canto. Oh, no canto. Yeah, uh, he missed that. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it actually kind of spreads. I like. This. I know the foam is good. Uh, the foam is awesome. There's so some foam, step ups if you kids want them. Idea. Home is a good idea. Felt is a good idea too for like the layers of skin or whatever. Thank you, an army navy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a little tilt up. Okay. All right. Alice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Can we get another army navy? Yeah. I need a little more room. I was trying to be nice to my patient. She said, don't leave her a big scar. Oh, well. So I didn't cut too big. You know they, what they say, good surgeons don't leave a scar. <laughs> yeah. yep. Right. Okay, come out. Mm -hmm. Come on out, please. <laughs> so, yesterday we discussed. Oh, oh. <laughs> My orientation Your thing. orientation yeah, thing. Yeah, okay. yeah. So when we pull out the mask, um, normally, you know, of course, we're going to want to mark so that we can ensure where exactly... Um, um, like the orientation. The orientation and what part of the anatomy it actually came out of. So when it's being, when it gets sent off to pathology, then that way they would know if where they find any cells, then we can go back in and that would be where we would go looking for more. So when they place it on your field, you wanna make sure that you don't move it because a lot of times they know exactly how they pulled it out and then how they placed it on here. Mm -hmm. So if you grab it and you move it, than what would have been possibly anterior here, and you possibly moved it, now we're marking superior. Okay. Can you fix my mask? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, we're going to mark. All righty. So long stitch is going to be anterior. Super long. Super long. Well, you know, pathology needs all the help they can get. Uh, yeah, that's true. They say never leave it questionable. <laughs> exactly. Because they will find a question. <laughs> that is the truth. Can you help me out? Yes. You know I was wanting to. I just didn't I want to get in your way. Your hand was itching. I was getting the debakey to see if I could just hold the specimen itself. Uh, where do you want? Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you. Yep. All right. And we'll put a short stitch. Superior? Yes. Are you going superior? Sorry.
what kind of music do you like? I could put that on your card if you, if there's a special. I like Disney you like. music. Okay, Disney music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, better. Just yeah. under? Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, how do you want this labeled? I got the long, long anterior short superior. Yep. Right breast right, biopsy? Right, right breast biopsy. Send fresh. Okay, fresh. Can I pass him off? Yes, you can. Okay. Tell pathology to step on. Chop, chop. Yes. <clears throat> All right. We're going to keep her open. This is stulp. I have a right breast biopsy. The long stitch is anterior and the short stitch is superior. Thank you. Can Thank you. Some irrigation, please. Mm-hmm. Lab? Yes, please. <laughs> Stat. All right, let's clean her up. <laughs> That's good enough. Obi. Thank you. Is there a kick bucket there by you, Wendy? Yes. All right. Did we hear anything back from pathology? <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> ring, ring, ring. I see some cells that are kind of close to the anterior margin. I think you might want to take a little bit more. Okay. All right, we're going in. So, thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Is that good? See, wait, I need you in my room. Kay. Anticipating my going needs. Going on the card. Met. Oh, I see, I see. Maybe this will be enough. These scissors are chewing. Oh, oh I'm sorry. There we go. Can I need to do something else. No, nope. that's good. All right, let's send this a little bit. Okay, do you want to mark this or no, we don't need to? I don't think we need to mark Okay. All right. Okay, so sometimes you might have to put it in the bucket. So if you have to put it in the bucket, you don't want any of your stuff to touch any of their stuff, right? So let's see if this works. <laughs> Aha. And that is exactly how it would happen. It would stick. And this is labeled um, anterior margin? Yes, please. All right. Let's take a look, Bobby. Yeah. Okie dokie. Let's see. Oh, oh. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> All right. Let's close her up. Send her home. Stitch. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, could I start my count, please? Yes. All right, Ray Tex, I have one. I have more than that. Hold on. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Thank you. Scissors are here, Doc, if you need them. Thanks. Um, laps. I have one, two, three, four, five soggy laps. Five All right, Bowie tip. Still got one. Stitch, she's using one, two, and three is still here. Blades, one on the mayo, two, three, and then four is hanging out in there. Okay, four. Hypos, I got one here, and two. Are you gonna inject more local? At the end. Okay, I'll wait to tell you that then. Did I get everything? I'm interested. Okay, counts correct. Thank you. We didn't lose anything. Do you want to try again? Mm-hmm. Try to lose something. Do you need a retractor? Yeah, I um, my look at my needle. I know. I bent mine. Yesterday, too. all the heck yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I went through it, I was like, oh, and then I ended up cutting it. Let's try to carry that. Maybe don't try so hard. That looks beautiful. I'm putting a bow in her. I like it. Yeah, it'll hopefully show up. Can you just cut those ends? We should x-ray it. Yep, that's good. What would you like to draw this? Yeah. It's on my card. I think she likes um, <laughs> Steri Strips Telfa 4x4, but I can't remember what size the Steri Strips are. I think. Is it a half inch good, Doc? I like half inch. Perfect. This will work. 
And how about massive salt? Sure. Okay. Since we're gonna make a nice little, this incision look as nice as possible. I'm sorry your preference card isn't right. We'll get it figured out so it's right next time. Oh, see? I need to have you on my team too. <laughs> team one, team two. I'm one. You're two. Yeah, they, they say, they one. <laughs> you have to go talk to our boss. Because what's, what's what's the boss's name? Um, Mrs. Brownbeck. <laughs> she's not here right now, though. She's of course she's not. Um, in a meeting. In a meeting. Mm -hmm. That's what they said to me last time, too. So she just so happens to be in a meeting mm -hmm. every time. Well, she's the, I'm doing cases. She's always in meetings. It's not just you. Oh. It's, you know. This needle. It's all the time. We need a heavier needle for this. Just so fun. A CT <laughs> or something. A CT too would be good. She's just got some really tough tissue. Fibrousness. Fibrotic tissue? Yeah, it's fibrotic. Fibrotic breast. Oh, don't one. poke yourself. Oh, no. That was really bad. First rule. Don't. Don't hurt yourself. So when you cut sutures, surgeons are really persnickety about where you cut it, how you cut it. You so can. when you hold your scissor, it's best if you do ring and thumb and your pointer finger like this. It gives you more control. Right, you're just gonna barely open the scissor. You're gonna cut with the tip if the tip does cut. <laughs> just a um, right on the knot. Okay, so I usually turn the scissor so that I can see and the surgeon can see. But sometimes if they if they want it right on the knot, you're gonna have to just slide down until you feel the knot <laughs> and then cut. All Sorry, right, there's a little twig to the left there. Okay, skin stitch. Do you like the Webster or you just want a regular needle? I'll take a Webster. Gives me a little more control of that baby needle. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I can't see. I can't see those stitches. Okay, I think I need to count one more time. Okay. Ray Tex. One. And two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh wait, no. One she has there. Two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Perfect. <laughs> Laps. One, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. Bovie tip. I have one here. Um, blades. I have one up on the nail. Two, three, and four. four. And hypodermic needles, I have one. Two. And what else? Stitches. Okay, stitches. One working. Um, one little fishy right here. So one working, two, and then three. three. Okay. Counts correct. Thank you. No, she hasn't injected more yet. Uh, I think I'll be fine. Okay. Then we you use some good two right? mLs <laughs> of two percent xylocaine with epi. Um, and then irrigation, we use one twenty. Jeez, I'm a mean doctor. I only give her two. I know. <laughs> you are mean. Do I mean follow? Dog? I definitely. I did hear a dog bark. Yeah, there's a little pug. You know those around. vet people? They bring their dogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um. <laughs> The director. <laughs> Cat? Cat? Yeah, I think it's her dog. Order. She brought the dog to get checked. Uh -huh. You doing okay? Yeah. Just putting a little tension on it. Do you want me to follow you? Um, no, you can do your thing. I will follow you. Oh, no, I don't think. <laughs> uh huh. I got my own role. You Hold on yourself. Doesn't make me a singer just because I sing, you know. Oh. 
Oh, hello. <laughs> Dr. Mr. Jennings. Almost done. Deanne, too. Deanne, gracias. Okay, pasta. Oh. Can I confess this in front of everybody? Don't tell me that you don't have my gown. No, I have everything. Okay. Okay, we're going to sit down with sickness patients. Okay. Just don't pick noses. My nipple came out. Oh, boy. Again. What's up? On the field trip. Oh. So as much as I, like, think I'm together sometimes, you know, it takes me three or four attempts to uh, to get it right. <laughs> On the seventh, have you ever signed up for the seventh? I actually have a new start, not a new start, a new sequence that day where, you know, I really can't be in two places at once. What? Okay, do you want to send me an email for like a week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I will. I figured um, it would be in the class, so I didn't realize you're going to If it could be on the same day, like, on a, on a following week because there's groups A, B, C, and D. So A is Monday, B, you know, they're different oh, groups. Oh, right. So Monday through Thursday. Absolutely, sure. So if it could be like, that would be great. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. That's we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> oh, very yeah. magnetic. Magnetized. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like your scary strips cut in half or? Yes, please. Okay. This might be all schmutzy, so I'm just going to use my clean towel just for this. So the scary strips come like this, and sometimes surgeons like them just like this in half and third. So until you know your surgeon, just ask. And then at the ends, both ends, they have this little perforation on the back. See that there? So you can just pull this off. Voila, revealing the steady strip. Okay. Um, four by fours, telfa. Do you want me to just cut a little piece of telfa? Yes, and I'd like some fluffs as well. Just a few. Fluffs. You're welcome. Please and thank you. Mm -hmm. Please and thank you. You are welcome. Almost there. I only have three four by fours. Do you want more than that? No. Okay. So you can just fluff one or two. Okay. All right. You cut. Just above. Thank you. Sloppy wet. Dry? Sloppy dry. Would you like a sloppy Joe next? <laughs> you like sloppy Joes? I do. Very, oh, mess. Oh, yes. Crack. Clean These normally are kind of the same thing. You would just squeeze and crack, and then the fluid comes to the very tip. These are amazing and I love the way they smell. Mm -hmm. They just smell good. And especially when it's a poopy case. And you have an awesome circulator. And they'll put it on your mask. Wee 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 wee. Done with the bovi? Yes, ma'am. You want to remove your bovi tip that goes in the sharps? All right. The rest of this will be trash. Gloves. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, and then everything is good with pathology, right? It's good. Okay, so we just want to make sure of that before we break our field. Like, if we haven't heard back from pathology, the surgeon might just leave and break scrub and get the chart and do whatever. And then we stay here and babysit until we get the call. And then we break down or move our field or whatever.
It's a scrub that's too hard. I have my hip. Okay, circulator with tape, the dressing. Um, and then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just use a towel or if I have laps left over, I'll just get a wet one. A towel works good, wet the tail. That way you can um, wipe off, wash the patient. Sorry, I'm not walking. Protect the dressings, don't get them all schmutzy. Okay, can we grab for you? Yep. Okay, that's it. That's how we do it. This is how we do it, baby. I can still scrub a fake case. <laughs>